It's been nearly three years since the UK officially left the EU. And as I've mentioned, we've been speaking this week to uh, a number of people who've been at the forefront of that debate about how Brexit is going. On Tuesday night, I went to a European Foundation reception to mark the anniversary, hosted by Sir Bill Cash, a Tory MP who's been campaigning for us to leave the EU since before it was fashionable. And I got to speak to some of the big beasts behind Brexit. You have been the advisers and the movers of this great revolution. And well done so far, but ladies and gentlemen, it's only just started. We have a lot to do and a lot to prove. The third anniversary of us leaving the EU and a celebration of some of Brexit's true believers. Among the political chaos of the past few months, this should have been a moment for them to savour. Some of the people in the room behind me have spent their entire political careers fighting for Brexit. A lot of them are the Spartans that voted down Theresa May's deal, and they have dedicated their political careers to making sure that we leave the EU. But three years on from that anniversary, do they think Brexit has been a success, or does the government need to do more to make the most of our post-Brexit opportunities? Former Northern Ireland Secretary Theresa Villiers. I know that there's a lot more that we need to get done to make sure that Brexit is a success. I know it can be, but... Uh, I, I think it's great that we've restored our status as an independent self-governing nation and we can no longer have laws imposed on us by people we don't elect and can't remove. Former Tory leader Sir Ian Duncan Smith. The bill going through that gets rid of European law, that's been delivered. You know, we've got a bill sitting in the Lords to deliver on Northern Ireland if we can get that through. So there are things happening, but of course... We can really make the UK hum when we've done these things. But thanks to COVID, it's taking longer than we anticipated. For many, the Northern Ireland Protocol remains one of the main pieces of unfinished business. Former Brexit Minister David Jones. Well, I think we need to make clear to the European Union that we will not continue with a state of affairs whereby Northern Ireland, a part of the UK, is subject to a foreign administration and subject to the jurisdiction of a foreign court. And what we ought to be doing is pressing on with the Northern Ireland Protocol Bill, which has gone through the Commons, which is now in the Lords. There was a clear sense among the room that the institutions ran by Remainers were preventing what they see as a true Brexit. The former Brexit Minister David Jones, again on the House of Lords. To crack on with the Northern Ireland Protocol Bill, to push it through the House of Lords, to tell the Lords that if they won't pass it, then we will invoke the Parliament Act and, if necessary, we'll consider abolishing them. And with question marks growing over the Prime Minister, there were even calls for the return of another, the former MEP David Campbell Bannerman. You know, the party still loves Boris Johnson. The public does, generally. He has lost a few people, that's true. But I would watch his space because I think there's huge pressure building to bring him back in triumph because the polls are so dire now, nearly 30% behind Labour, that but, we need rescuing. But in what role? As Prime Minister? As Prime Minister. I mean, I think that is, is viable. I, we don't know if he wants to do it or not. So with more internal rows over Europe that don't look like they're going away any time soon, where does this leave the Conservative Party? The Telegraph's Chris Hope. Brexit is a, a state of mind, really. It's about giving power back, sovereignty back to Britons to run their own affairs. And if they can't do it properly, and I do wonder whether Brexit is such a great responsibility, it's too much for the Tory party. And maybe it's Labour's chance to do what they can do. Because I'm not sure this government can deliver on what the promise of what Brexit could be. There's no mistaking the celebratory atmosphere in the room here. People from a democratic perspective are grateful that we can now self-govern and that we're an independent nation from the EU. However, as with the electorate, I do sense some frustration. The Brexiteers in the room want things to have happened more quickly. They want us to maximise the Brexit opportunities. So it isn't a case that Brexit has been done. I think it's more of a case that they believe on Brexit there's a hell of a lot more we have to do.